My name is Anna Hofmeyer and I'm Associate Professor at Kansai University in Japan. I am originally from Portugal, but I found a love for traveling and exploring other cultures and I ended up in Japan. And just traveling around the world really made me interested in intercultural competence, how to interact with others who are culturally different from myself, how to work and socialize and create also an intercultural family. And that's how I got into this research. Intercultural competence is the ability to interact respectfully and effectively with culturally different others. I think there is a tendency to think of culturally different others as people who live in other countries. But the truth is that there is also diversity within. So we're not only talking about people from other countries, we are talking about people from different regions in the same country, or even different generations, people who perceive the world differently from ourselves. Intercultural competence is really an umbrella term, uh, and it includes intercultural attitudes, knowledge and skills. So, for example, it means being curious about other cultures or open to what is new and different, but also respect cultural diversity. It also includes having an awareness of how your own upbringing uh, brought you to where you are now. So having that cultural self-awareness and an awareness that things can be done differently and that people can think differently from yourself. It can also include an awareness for global issues of how we are connected to each other and how our own issues are in our own society impact the societies. Intercultural competence can also include intercultural skills. For example, foreign language skills to communicate with people who speak other languages, but also different kinds of skills. For example, the ability to think critically about a problem, to see it from multiple perspectives, and also problem-solving skills, so that when there is conflict, we can find a way of working around it. So why is intercultural competence important? Well, the short reason is that we interact more with people who are culturally different from ourselves. There is an increase in cultural diversity in our own countries. There is also an increase in mobility. People travel more, they travel for work, they travel for experiences, they travel as students, and they meet people from different countries and regions. There's also an increase in interconnectedness. Uh, we create intercultural families. We have friends and friend families with people from other cultures. And this means that we need to have the skills and the attitudes and the knowledge to cooperate, to collaborate, to live with people who are culturally different from ourselves. How can we develop intercultural competence with our students? There are a wide range of activities. For example, discussions, projects, presentations with an intercultural focus. In my own classes, I use a variety of English as a foreign language and English for academic purposes textbooks. In those textbooks, I start with the initial topic discussion. Um, I go through the language exposure, vocabulary, reading, listening, and speaking and writing skills. And then I add an additional third intercultural component to the discussion. I ask students to discuss the topic one more time, now from multiple perspectives, or considering how people from different regions, different cultures, different generations would look at this topic. If I have time, I also give students a student-led research project. I give them a question that they can focus on and they research on their own time then they can bring it back to the classroom and share the answers in a group discussion or in presentations. Integrating this intercultural component into the discussion and into projects allows students to really expand their views and to consider topics from different perspectives that they might have not considered it before. In a one-year research study I did with speaking and writing classes, 
this proved to be very effective in developing students' curiosity, openness, cultural self-awareness, and also awareness of global issues. The last step is assessment. And assessment can also be used to reinforce the intercultural aspects that were discussed in the classroom. So incorporating intercultural questions into the midterm discussion or global topics into the final presentation can be extremely helpful in developing students' intercultural competence in the classroom. In addition, students identified pair and group work as not only the most interesting, but also the most useful type of activities to learn about other cultures and culturally different others in the classroom. There are several challenges to incorporating intercultural competence into the classroom. The first one is the lack of cohesion. Intercultural competence activities must be systematically and intentionally integrated into the course. It is not enough to talk about uh, cultural diversity for 10 minutes in the classroom. There must be a plan and a goal that involves incorporating intercultural discussions or intercultural aspects systematically into the course. The second challenge is the problem with reinforcing stereotypes. Allowing students to have pair and group discussions and student-led projects also means that students might fall into the trap of reinforcing um, stereotypes by researching only the surface culture, uh, looking at festivals and food without considering why those are celebrated, why people have that kind of diet is an issue. Uh, here, the teacher plays an important role in uh, helping students to conduct research beyond surface culture and also teaching students that it's important to look not only at the differences between culturally different others and ourselves, but also to focus on the similarities and what we have in common. The third challenge is striking a balance between the role of the teacher uh, and the role of the student in the classroom. The interculturally aware and intercultural competent teacher has an important role in the classroom as a source of intercultural knowledge and experiences for the students. The teacher can act as a bridge between the students and the intercultural world. But it is also important to give the students space to conduct their own independent research. This allows students to explore and to see interculturality and multiculturality from their own perspective, to bring their own ideas into the classroom that they can share and discuss and critically think about with their peers. The final challenging is measure progress. Progress must be considered in terms of the course objectives and focus, the tools and the resources available to the teacher, but mainly on how students will benefit from that measurement and from assessment of intercultural competence development. For any educator interested in develop intercultural competence in students, it is important to prepare in advance and to consider five different points. First, educators must determine how intercultural competence ties into the course. How can it be fully and systematically integrated? Second, educators must determine which intercultural aspects they want to focus on or they are asked to prioritize by their institutions. Third, it is important to explore the kinds of activities and projects that make sense in the classroom. When we look at classes that focus on speaking or listening activities, we might be looking into very different kinds of intercultural competence projects than classes that focus on reading or writing activities. The fourth uh, step is to determine your own role in the classroom. What kind of role is the teacher uh, interested in playing in the classroom? Facilitator, a bridge, uh, a guide to students. And finally, to consider how educators can ensure that students think and research beyond surface culture and stereotypes. How are educators going to make sure in the classroom, during the projects, during the discussions, 
that students can take it one step further, that they can critically think about the topic. Once educators have an idea of these five points, it is all about trial and error. Not everything will work with every class. Not every activity will be successful with all of the students. It is really about trying every term with every class and adapt and change into activities that can benefit your classroom and your students.